Your lab homework help starts now. Welcome to Count On Us. What is the length from the entrance to the giant wheel? All right, so let's add three here and see what happens. First, measure first. I need you to double check yourself. So the second equation for solve perimeter is? Two times length plus two times width. to the elementary version of Count on Us. I am Shari Sternberg and I am excited to be here today to help you with your math homework. Lots of ways you can reach us. Let me tell you some of them. First, give us a call. Start checking your homework and calling in. Our number, which will be flashing at the bottom of the screen for you, is 301 772-0080. There it is on the bottom of your screen. Start calling. Get the homework ready because we're here to help you. You also can reach us through email at COU, which stands for count on us, so COU at PGCPS.org. And that's where you can send us an email and you can probably get your email question into our email corner where we have students solving those problems. We're also live streaming on the web and that is a webcast. If you go to our website and www pgcps.org you'll see where it says webcast and go to count on us and then you can see us streaming live so hopefully we will see you well, we won't see you you'll see us but we will hear you and we want you to be able to hear us so please make sure that when you call in your television is muted that means the volume is turned all the way down when you're talking to us because you'll talk to us through the telephone and we will talk to you through the telephone but those that are watching and waiting you will hear us through the TV so I keep saying we because I have a partner here and she's gonna join us as we begin to tell you about all the different things we have going on so we're gonna start with our challenges. Oh, so welcome. Yes. Hi. I'm so glad to be here. And I heard Monday our phones were lit, light, lit up. Lit up. Oh, lit up. Okay. So we know we have all these math students out there in Prince George's County Public Schools mm -hmm. ready to call in. And I'm so happy that we have our 24 challenge. Yay. One of my favorite challenges in the world. So we're going to share the challenge. If you're not familiar with 24, the object is to use all the digits once and only once. You can use addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, a mixture of those four operations. The goal is to get the number 24 as your answer. So what we're going to do, we're going to read the digits on each card, write them down, work it out, call us, and when you have a solution, let us know which card it is, and we will see if you are correct. So you're writing these down as we read them. Card A, card A, which is a one dot. Two, four, eight, and four. Oh, I said four twice. Do so they have to write that twice? They do have to write yes. that twice because they have to use four twice. You have to use each digit once and only once. Okay, so make sure you write it down. So we have a card B, that's a two dot, that has the number eight, six, five, and four. All right, moving to card C. Jot these four numbers down. A seven, a two, four, and five. And our last card has a seven, a four, another four, 
and an eight. So write the digits on all the four cards, figure out which card you want to call, and give us a solution for. And not only give us a solution when you call in, make sure you're listening to other people's solutions because the one thing I love about Challenge 24, almost every card has more than one solution. Yes, it does. I'm saying almost because there may be one or two out there that I haven't seen that don't have more than one, but every card I have worked with has had more than one solution. Yes, they have. So if somebody picked your card and you said, oh, I want a card A, listen to see how they solved it. And if you solved it a different way, guess what? You can call and give your solution and you will be in our our treasure chest. Is, our treasure treasure chest. And I when we say today. a different way, if, with, if one person has four plus eight, is eight plus four a different way? That is not different. Okay. Commutative property is not different. We're just reversing those numbers. We need whole different strategies. Yes. Whole different strategies. Different strategies. All right. We have another challenge. Yay. And I'm actually going to cover part of this challenge up because we're not going to give them the options. Oh. Look over here. This one has a lot of information, so I'm hoping you can see it. Jot this information down. It's kind of, it's let's a, see. All right, let's see. It's, not, it's a shadow. Let me move. <laughs> you're making a shadow. <laughs> the number you are looking for. All right, so you're going to find a number. The number you are looking for contains three digits. So place value, three digits, mm -hmm. you should know already. Have some information. The first digit of three, so you should be thinking, again, thinking in your heads, one, two, three. The first digit. Think about what place that is. Minus the second digit equals the third digit. Whoa, mm. a lot of stuff going on. A lot of math. A lot of math. The first digit plus the second digit plus the third digit. Ooh. So maybe you should be jotting down the clues. First minus the second equals the third. These are digits, digits. Okay, and then we have the next clue. The first plus the second plus the third, and we know that plus represents an addition sign, or addition sign represents plus, equals 10. All right. And then more clue. the three-digit number, already told you it was a three-digit number, is less than 700. Can we put this up here? Because your notes are really good. Oh, so there's some notes. So when I, I love number problems. My friends call I me a number too. nerd. I do puzzles and number problems all the time. Not because hey, I'm in school or I'm a math teacher. I just always have liked them. That probably is why I'm a math teacher, because <laughs> I've always liked the numbers and the challenges. But I was thinking out loud, so I'm letting you see my thinking. Three digits, so here's what I'm thinking in my head. The first digit minus the second digit equals the third digit, and one the first digit plus the second digit plus the third digit equals 10. Now, one question for you. Yes. Would you assume that the first digit is here or the first digit is here? You know what? I'm going to say that the first digit is here because left to right, I would order it first, second, third. First. Now we're using ordinal numbers. First, mm -hmm. second, third. So look at all the math we're getting into this one simple problem, okay? And you know what? If you can't come up with any number with these clues this way, then try it the other way. Maybe <laughs> first goes at the other end. But we're suggesting you start this way, the way we read left to right, the way we read numbers. Yes. Well, we gave you a lot of information about that. That's fun. I so want to do what it you, myself. Yeah, well, we got other things to oh, do. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Like dropping things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what else should we do? Well, reminding you all that the number is flashing on your screen, 301-772-0080. I know you're out there because we had so many callers on Monday. And we actually have a caller now, I think, that we're going to get to. But yes. we also want you to tell your friends, tell your brothers yes. and sisters, tell your classmates mates because uh, we are going to take a call and every time you call ah, hold that box up yes when you call we have a call and on when the they air. call what happens i'm going to write your name on a little piece of paper you're going to be on the treasure chest Whoa. and then guess what happens at the end at the end you shake 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 a shake, drawing shake. a drawing pick a name out and did you also know all right, the and what else? First Tell us what else. Five schools that call. Your I, teacher. Oh, I didn't know. Tell me. Yes. So five schools, the very first five schools that call. 
and you tell us who your wonderful math teacher is, guess what? What? Your teacher will get a prize. Oh, your teacher? Your teacher. Oh, so not only that is cool. can the students get a prize when you are picked out of our treasure chest, we are going to reward our wonderful, hardworking math teachers. Oh, I love it. So call your friends, tell everybody we are on the air. And let's take our caller. Hi, this is Count on Us. Who do we have there? We have someone we can see that we do. Yes. This is Count on Us. Caller, say your name. Justin Harris. Hey, Justin. Is it Justin? Yes. Excellent. So we're going to write Justin down. I have some papers ready for thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank Justin, you. Justin, and tell us what school you go to. Potomac Landing. Potomac Landing. Who is your teacher? Miss Glass. Miss Glass? Yes. Oh, Miss Glass. Ms. So you're saying Miss Glass. Glass gets a prize? Miss Glass will get oh, a prize. Oh, thank Potomac you. Landing Good job, Justin, house. at Potomac Landing. Justin, what grade are you in? Justin, you still there? Oh, yes. What grade are you in? What question? What, what grade? grade? What grade? What? First grade, second grade, third grade. Oh. What grade are you in? Third. Third grade. Oh, Excellent. Right. Tell me what the problem is. Let's see if we can help you solve it on Count on Us. All right. It says draw an array for an, a known ten stack. Then subtract one from each row to find the product. Okay, so we're going to draw an array, and let's make sure we all know what an array is. Can you tell us what an array is? Huh? Can you... T What's an array, What's Justin? an array? We want to make sure everybody knows. We all have to be working with the same vocabulary, the same information. So what's an array? I think an array is like a picture. It is kind of like a picture, and an array has rows and columns. Okay, so we're going to draw a picture that has rows and columns. And you want our array to have numbers on it, so tell me more. Say again, because sometimes we reread a problem a couple of times so we can understand it. So we're drawing an array, and I did hear you say something about 10, so read it again. It says, oh, the question? Yes, read it again. Oh, it says draw an array for a known 10 stack, then subtract one from each row to find the product. Oh. All right, so that's a multiple step problem. We have a couple of things to do. Draw an array for a known tens fact. So what are our oh, tens facts? Tell me a tens fact that you know. Oh, so you're talking about what's the question I'm supposed to do? Yes. Oh, six times nine equals. And on the bottom it says known fact. Okay. Oh, she said for t uh, he said for ten. But he, the, the, you're trying to figure out six times nine but you're going to use an array using a known 10 fact. So let's look at our 6 oh, times 9. Oh, a known 10 fact, like mm -hmm. 6 times 10. Yes. Oh, I was thinking we were going to make it equal 10. So my mind went to 5 times 2 is 10, and we were going to oh, draw an array for that. That makes sense. Okay, but not if that's what we want. But we want to know, because right. 6 times 9, that's... That's a, a hard, that's a hard yeah, to know. Yeah, especially for third grade. Yes. But 6 times 10. So 6 times 10... How many rows would we have four, six times 10? And if we look at our paper, we have longer on one end and shorter on the other end. So what's the smaller number? Oh, six, six rows of 10. Okay, six rows of 10. And I'm gonna put the sixes going across and 10 in each row, and maybe you can help so we can get yeah. it done quicker. Yes, I should. So I'll start from here if we can get in the same one. Let's do one. To, I'll do the first one and then you can help me. Well, we're going to just do dots. It doesn't matter really what we mm -mm. use to represent. One, two, I'm coming down three, four, five, and six. So let me make sure you can see all six. Excellent. Okay, so we're getting some assistance here. And drawing arrays can take some time. But we are four. going, I'm up to three five. rows of six. You. We're getting a little wide in there, so we're not perfectly aligned, but that's yes. okay. We have six rows so far. Let's make sure. Six sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, and we, six, need we need ten. ten in each row. Six, All right. seven. So while you're doing that, you're keeping going, and I'm going to keep talking. Yes. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there was a six right there I could have used. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, Justin, Ooh. do you see how this is six rows of ten? Huh? 
<laughs> Do you see how this is six rows going across? A row goes across. We have six rows with ten dots. Not perfectly aligned, but we're close nope. enough. With ten dots in each row. Do you see that? Yes. All right. So what's a good note? How can we count to make this easy to figure out how many are here? We can count by what? Tens. Tens. That's easy. So why don't you do that? So what do we have? And you can point to that end, either end. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60. So uh, we had 6 times 10 up here before. We know 6 times 10 equals 60. Is 6 times 9 going to be more or less than that? Excuse me? Is 6 times 9 going to be more or less than 6 times 10? Um, less. Less. Very good. Now, how do we figure out how many less? How is this picture going to help us get here? Uh, it could, um, I don't know. You said something <laughs> in your directions. You said make a known tens fact in an array and then remove a what? Remove the product. Well, to make the product, but you said remove a one, right? Is that what, right? Yeah. Remove, we're going to remove a column. A column. Because our column. six is our first factor. But we want to know six times nine. What did we make? What was our array? For which? Well, our array was six times? Six, six times ten. Six times ten. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this array, I'm sorry, this column on this array, and I'm going to remove it. How many? dots are in this column? If, how many what? How many dots are in this column? I have my column 10. I'm going to take that out. How many dots are in column 10? Oh. How many dots are in every column? Six. 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 So if I remove my Here. six dots, so I no longer have 60. Why don't you remove the 6 from the 60? Yeah. I have 6 less than 60. What's 60 take away 6? 60 take away 6 is... Fifty-nine. Well, let's look at that. 60 take away 1, if I count back 1, that's 59. Let's count back six. 60, 59, 54, 60, 52, 51. Oh, I mean 50. 60 take away 10. Let's write it this way. I love writing my math horizontally because I like to do it mentally, but let's do it this way. You see my 60 minus 6? Yes. Let me ask you this. 6 plus what equals 60? There I am on the screen. 6, wait. 60 plus 6, wait, 60 minus 6. Um, so. Let's start in the ones. Let's do the standard algorithm. What do we know so about the 0 and the 6? 6 times 0 equals 6. So if you can't, yeah. 6 times 0 equals, I mean, 6 minus 0 equals 6. If we have zero, can I give you six? If I have zero dollars, can I give you six dollars? Let's do it this way. Because subtraction, that's one of our, one of my favorite operations, because it's related to addition. I actually have Let's 10 here that you can cubes. use. Okay. So this, these snap cubes represent the tens place. Okay, we have 10 there. And if you have, first of all, if you had none, can you give us six? Well, you just answered that. If you have zero, can you give us six? If you have nothing, can you give us six? You got zero. Can you give us anything? No. No. But now, we're going to take this 6 and we're going to borrow from a 10s. So here I have 10. I'm going to break them apart so we have 10 ones. So look what Miss Nelson. Gen yes. What's it, what's Generette. Nelson. Generette <laughs> Nelson. We got two names going on. I got to remember all these names. Miss Generette Nelson, look what she did. She took the 10 that we had. We broke it apart so we kind of regrouped it. 
and we're now putting the ten ones over here. Now we have ten ones. Now can you give me six, Justin? Yes. Yes. Give them to Miss Nelson. Count with her. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Five. five six. six. I just counted for you, okay? How many do I have? How many are left? Four. I mean, four. yes, four. exactly four. Yeah. So five minus zero, fifty-four is how many is left when we remove that row or excuse me that column of six. So six we, times right. nine. All up was we need to go next. We need to go next door and cross out. Okay. Six, put the five right. Exactly. Right. So you're now saying the steps that Miss Jenneret Nelson did for you. Okay? All right. Excellent. So we use our known 10 facts, 6 times 10. We took 6 out. That leaves us with 54. 6 rows of 9. And, and what they're saying is, if you know 6, 6 times 10 is 60. Look how quick we do that. Bam. Well, 6 times 10 is 60. Take 6 away. We have 54. Otherwise, you have to count all these dots. I don't want to count 54 dots. I sure don't either. Right? So we use what we know to help us get to where we're not sure. All right? Excellent job. Great job, did Justin. Did you write Justin's name down? I did. Justin, you are in. Your teacher, Ms. Glass, is in for a prize as well. And we have another teacher and another student coming right up here. So next, who do we have on the line? This is Count on Us. Tell us who you are. Hi, this is Count on Us. Who is on the line? Sometimes I think they don't know we're talking to them yet. Hi. I hope you turned your TV down and you're not looking at us at the TV and you're talking to us on Is the phone. Is this um, a kill? A kill? Are you out there, a kill? Yes. Okay. Hey so we're talking to you. So I don't think they know when we're talking exactly to them because they're waiting patiently, which we appreciate. Great job. A kill, tell us what school you go to. A kill, can you hear me? Yes. What school do you go to? Potomac Landing. Oh, is that where? Oh, another Potomac oh, Landing. Oh, and who's your teacher? Akil, who's your teacher? Hi. Hi. <laughs> who's your teacher, Akil? What Make sure your TV is all the way down. Hit the mute button if you have a mute button. Turn it all the okay. way down. You can hear us? Yeah, you know what? I don't, you're, you're, we're doing this. I don't know that they even know, have I those on TVs anymore. Mute. That was when we were growing up, <laughs> not when they're growing up. <laughs> so, yes, hit the remote button that says mute so you're not hearing us from the television. You're only hearing us from the telephone. So, Akil, are you there? Yes. Great. You go to Potomac Landing. Who is your teacher? Who's my teacher? Yes, what's your math <laughs> teacher's name? Reinhardt. Miss Reinhardt. Miss Reinhardt. Reinhardt. And what grade are you in? What do you say? What grade are you in? Four. Fourth, Fourth grade, grade. Ms. Reinhardt. Ms. Reinhardt. Whoosh, we got that. So Ms. Reinhardt is our second of five. Nope. Oops, how many? Potomac Landing called twice. Oh. So we need a new school. Sorry. So Sorry, Ms. Joshua, Reinhardt. Yeah. Ms. <laughs> Glass beat you. Okay, so each school, five different schools. Five different schools. First five schools. different schools. So that's okay. We're still going to help you, even yes. if the teacher's not winning a prize. And she was winning a prize anyway because she has you in her class, right? And yes. you may win a prize, Akil, because you are in the treasure chest. All right, chest. we got a word problem What's going on on question, you. What's your question, Akil? Let's hear it. I hope I'm saying your, yes. your name right. Okay, what's your question, sir? Ma'am. Jack is 36 years old. He went to a birthday party for someone in his family named Alice. When he was there, he realized that his age is a multiple of Alex's age. Fine. All the possible ages that Alice could be. Show your work in the link below and then write your answer on the line. That's a good one. I like that. I do too. Because you got to think about it. It's not just there's the answer. We have to think through this and make sure we understand math vocabulary. So, 36 years old. That was who? Jack. Jack. And then Jack had Aaliyah. Alice, I thought it was. Alice. Is it yes. Alice? Alice. Jack realized that Alice is age is a multiple of his age. Oh wow, a multiple of. Wait 36? a minute, that can't be right. Say it again. Can you read, read your again. problem again? His age is a multiple of her age. Yes, that there makes more sense. Go. Alice's age is yes. a multiple of thirty-six. Jack is thirty-six years old. Jack is thirty-six. Go ahead years and old. read it again. Mm -hmm. He went to. A birthday party for someone in his fam family named 
Allison. Okay. Allison. Allison. We're close. We're close enough. Okay. <laughs> when he was there, he realized that his age is multiple of Allison's age. Okay. Ah. So. So if his age is a multiple of hers, is he older or younger than her? Younger. Oh, when we talk about multiples, we're talking about multiplying, so the numbers are getting bigger. If she is a multiple of him, she has to be smaller. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so go ahead. So, Jack is 36 years old. Allison is a multiple... No. no, Allison is 36 is a multiple of Allison's, of Allison's age. age. So there's lots of ages that Allison could be, but it's related to Jack because what are the factors of Jack? How can we make 36? You can make 36 of... Because, one, okay, go ahead. How can one, we make, mm -hmm. one times 36. 36. Okay. What's another way to make 36? Two times. If we took 36 and cut it in half, I'm going to help you out, okay? Okay. Half of 36, 18 plus 18 is 36. That's a double. So 2 times 18. What's another factor? What are two factors of 36? It. It could be 32. 32 times a number will give us 36? Yes. <laughs> well, I know 32 times 1 would be 32. 32 times 2 Way too big. would be 64. So 32 okay. is not a factor. That's why I love when we do factors where we use a Texas T because they oh, know they get them all. Oh, I remember that Texas T. Yeah, that way we know you have all of the factors. We have one, we have two. What about three? Can three go into 36? Yes. Three times what? Three times six. Three times six is 18. Oh, so that should I matter. I see 18 here. So if three times six is 18, and that's half of 36, what can I do with the six? You can... Multiply six by. So this is a good reason that it's very important by fourth grade we learn our math facts. Yeah. Very important we know our multiplication facts. Three times six is eighteen, which is half of thirty-six. So if I double the six, three times twelve is thirty-six. Is like thirty-six. It. How about any number times four? We say. Four times what will give us 36? Three. We're on four because we have three times 12. Four times something. Four. Four. Hold up. And you know what? We're going to use the same strategy we just used with Justin. Use a known fact. What's four times 10? 10, 20, 30. 40, 4 times 10 is 40, and if we take away... Take away 4, what's 40 take away 4? 40 take, it, take away 4 is 54. Wait, not 54, 34. Close, 36. So if we took a row away, 4 times 9 equals 36. I know 5 can't go into 36 because it has to end with 5 and 0. Six times what is 36? 
six times itself. Six times six. Yay! Is 36. So we have these factors of 36. So the age of Allison is a multiple. 36 is a multiple. And all of these, because we could say she could be two, two four, six, eight, ten, twelve, four. Uh, um, if when we do our multiplication facts, we go through each of these, and we're going to get you started, and you do the rest. We know she can be one, yeah, right? Because she just one, turned two, three, one, four, five, six, and you count by one. ones. When you count by ones, will you say thirty-six? Okay. A, a kill. If you count, yes. When you count by ones, you'll say thirty-six. So we know one is a factor of thirty-six. When you count by twos, will you say thirty-six? Yes. Yes, so oh. two. Yes, you will. Two, four, Any six, Any even eight. number. Mm -hmm. Get up to 30, 32, 34, 36. So any even number is going to be a multiple. So we know two is a multiple. So you need to keep going. All of these, if they're factors, are going to be multiples of this number. Because when you count by them, you're going to get there. I'm wondering if there's more information. Cause About she, that problem. Because she could be any of these ages. She could be 36. She could be 36. She could be the same age as Jack. She, she could be 4. She could be 9. She could be 18. Okay, but there are limited numbers here because but she, she can't can be, be 5. Be, exactly. Can she be 7? She okay, could. Can she be? No, she can't. If I count by 7s, I will never get to 36. I would get to 28. Akil, can 35. you see this table we have right here? Can you see this table that Miss Jenner Nelson just did? Can you see these numbers? Yes. Yes. All of these numbers, which are factors of 36, also can be multiples. All right? These are the multiples. When we multiply by 6, we will get to 36. When we multiply by 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, if we keep going, listing our multiples, we will get to 36. So these numbers are all multiples. So is number is number uh, 11 a multiple of 36? Look here, is number 11 one of these numbers? Yes. Where do you see number 11? No. No, exactly. So 11 is not. 7 we just said. Is 7 on this list? No. Then it is nope. not. Allison could be any of these ages, any of these numbers. None of the other numbers that aren't on that list. Only these numbers right here. Okay. That I, was I, a hefty I, I problem think we right got there. It. And, and on that note, uh, what we're going to do is take a break. We know that we have several people on the line, and we want you to stay there. Stay on the line because we're going to be coming back after our break, but there's lots of uh, information we're going to be sharing with you, including an email corner problem. Ooh, so yay. keep watching. All right. Hi, I'm Cameron from Samuel Ogle Middle School. Today's email question is from Nicole at Benjamin Tasker. Nicole says, my problem is 98 hundredths times 7 and 3 tenths. I don't know where to put the decimal after I multiply. Help! Well, Nicole, first you do basic multiplication. You do 8 times 3, which equals equals 24. You drop your 4 and carry your 2. Next you do 3 times 9 which is 27 plus 2 is 29. You drop your 9 and carry your 2. Next you do 3 times 0 which is 0 plus 2 is 2. Next we move to the 10 to the 1's cup. Now we do 7 times 8 which equals 56. You drop your 6 and carry your 5. Next we do 7 times 9. 7 times 9 is 63. Plus 5 is 68. You drop your 8 and carry your 6. Next we do 7 times 0, which equals 0. Plus 6 is 6. 
So now we add for a placeholder we add a zero. Four plus zero is four. Nine plus six is fifteen. Drop your five, carry your one. Next we do eight plus two. Eight plus two is ten plus one is eleven. You drop your one, you carry your one. Next we do one plus six. One plus six is seven. Now we look at the problem. We see that a decimal comes before three numbers in this problem, which means in the answer you bring the decimal over three places and you get an answer of 7 in 154 thousandths. Well, Nicole, I hope that was helpful. That was the email question of the day, and I'm Cameron Jenkins from Samuel Ogle. Bye! Soccer. All across America, it's how kids get fit and have fun. Join us. Go to usyouthsoccer.org. Welcome back to Count On Us. We are here to answer all math questions that you have. I am Mrs. Jenneretz and Ms. Sternberg. And we are here to take your phone calls. The phone number should be flashing on the screen momentarily. You can reach us at 301-772-0080 with those homework questions. We've had two wonderful students from Potomac Landing, Ms. Was it Ms. Glass? Ms. Glass was going to win something. She will get a prize. And then I see all these other schools on our list so today. So let's get right to them. So we're going to get right to our next caller. Lots of callers. Hi, right, we caller. have Whitney, I think. Whitney, hi, this is Count on Us. Ah, Whitney. Whitney? Whitney? Yeah. Loud and clear. Make sure your TV's down and your voice is up so we can hear you. Whitney's from what school? Highland Park? Yes. Awesome. So what's your teacher's name? Ms. Costa. Ms. All right, you Cost got that? They sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> Say your name again. Say your name again, Miss Kostashak? Yes. Ooh, just Costa spell it as it sounds. I am. And what grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth grade, excellent. What problem can we help you with, Whitney? Huh? What's Wh your question? What's your math question for today? The question says, explain how you know whether an estimate of a project is an overestimate or an underestimate. Oh, I love it. Ooh. Do they give you some numbers to play with? Huh? Do they give you any numbers to use for examples, or they want you to just use your own numbers and explain it? I think they want me to use my own numbers and explain it. Okay, okay. so we're connecting writing literacy yes. to, to the numeracy. Okay, we got to read, write, listen, speak, and understand numbers. Yes, we do. Right. And I would love, can we use a number line? Oh, go for it. Can we use a number line, Miss Whitney? always use number lines. Love they number lines. They are my favorites. And see dark I'm going to use my black I was gonna say, let's move for to my a number color. line. And let's just pick 
two numbers. Let's let's do between two hundred and Whitney, can we put start a number line with two hundred? Yes. You know why? Thank you, huh? Whitney. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney. Help no, me go out. For it. Whitney, let me let Whitney answer. Oh, Whitney, come back. Whitney, because I took your thunder. You're the star of the show. <laughs> Why can't I put 200 on this number line? Why do I not start at zero? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again? Yes, I can. Why is it fine for me to make my number line start at 200? Well, I think it's good to make your number line first at 200. Because maybe, like, 100 would be a little too low. Well, I can make a number line start at 2. We can start at 0. We can start at negative 10. But why is she allowed? I wanted to know how come she's allowed to put 200 on this number line. What on this number line gave her permission to put 200 here? What's on this number line? Line. What do you see on the ends of it? Again. You see this right here, yeah. what I'm tracing in my <laughs> shadows there? This arrow means that it does what? That the numbers that way are greater than 300. They are greater than 300, and this arrow indicates that this line will go on and on and on and on this way forever. As will my line this way on and on and on and get smaller forever. So I can start my number line anyway. anywhere because the number line goes both directions infinitely. And my hand, I have a puppet. So I just said, give me a number between 200 and 300. 250. Can we do a different number? <laughs> you know why? Because I'm going to put the obvious number smack dab well, in the middle. 250. So pick another number between 200 and 300. 220. All right, 220. 220, I can't believe I said and. Where would 220 fall on this number line? Would it be over here? Would it be somewhere around here? Can we say here? Yeah. Why can't I say here? Why can't 220 go here? Because 220 is not, 220 is closer to 200 and 300. Perfect job. So let's say I have 220, and you wanted to know about products, right? Yes. So if I'm doing 220 times 9. But I want to make an estimate first. I want to see what my answer would be close to. I can... Pick the closest 100 to 220, which is 200, right? Yes. So, in my head, I can do 200 times 9. Oh, that's a much friendlier number. What's 200 times 9? 200 times 9? Mm-hmm. What's 2 times 9? 18. 18. So 200 times 9 would be what? 1800. Excellent. Very good. Now, I have an estimate. Is this estimate an overestimate or an underestimate? Is my actual answer going to be more than 1800, which is an overestimate, or less than 1800? Less than 1800. How do you know? Because 200 is less than 220. Exactly. Perfect job. So I know I will have an underestimate if I round my number down to a lower number. Okay. Right? Yes. So let's say I'm multiplying nine times. Actually, can we use that for a quick moment? Yes. Let's use that same information and if to make it really a quick estimate, again, if we rounded this up to 300, ah, we have 300 times 9, same way, what's 3 times 9? 3 times 9? Yep, 
27. And add your two zeros. So what's the product? 2700 or 2700 is this an overestimate or an underestimate that will be an if we rounded it from 220 up to 300 are we overestimating over. exactly Very good. so when you round up you're overestimating when you round down you're underestimating and that's a good way to figure it out that's a nice way to explain it to your teacher and you just did examples, you can use those in your explanation. Because whenever you use numbers in your explanation with words, it makes it clearer. G got it? Oh, I was supposed to write your name down. Give me a I quick did. moment. I did. Oh, thank you. Whitney, your name goes into the treasure chest. And your teacher, let her know. She'll be getting a prize. Okay. All right, excellent thank job. You. Thanks for calling. Who do we have next on the line? I think we have Dewan. Is that you, Dewan? Dejan. Oh, Dejan's oh, good too. Hey, Dejan. Uh, this is Count on Us, and we're so glad that you called us. What school do you go to? Robert R. Gray. That's a new school. Robert R. Gray. So your teacher, is that the third one? That is the third Robert one. Robert R. Gray, third teacher. What's your teacher's name? Miss Fletcher. Miss Fletcher. Fletcher. And what grade Fletcher. are you in, sir? Six. Sixth grade. And it's Dewan. 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 Dewan, tell us what. I'm sorry? Dejan. I'm Dejan. sorry, Dejan. I'm sorry, Dejan. Dejan. Okay. I see that. Dejan. All right, Dejan. So, Dejan, tell us what we can help you with. Um, write the fraction as a decimal. Awesome. Ooh. And if you can do it as a fraction decimal, you can also do it as a... Decimal. As a, but if you know fractions and decimals, you also know the third one that goes with that, because then you can also tell us the... What's this the symbol for? Um. Oh, let them show it to you. <laughs> yes, we've got to show it to you to know. What's that symbol? Percentage. Percent. Very good. Fractions, decimals, and percent. If you can do any one, you can do all three. So what numbers are we working with? Um, 11 25 11 25 which I'm going to write like that. Okay? Okay. So what form is this? Could you please repeat that? What form is this? Is this a fraction, decimal, or percent? Um... What is this? You see the when number you look on at this the number eleven twenty fifths the way I wrote it. Is this a fraction or in a decimal form or in a percent form? A fraction. It's a fraction. Sure. Now you need to change this from a fraction to a decimal. Correct? Yes. And I love. There's lots of ways to do this. There are. Do you have a strategy you want to use? Because then we'll show you other strategies. But what strategy? Well, we got a lot of callers up. Tell me what strategy your teacher tells you to use. Um, she didn't say any strategy. Okay. Okay. So why don't we use? You want to use division? Yes. Okay. Okay. You, okay. you like division? Sure. Let's use division. A lot of times students don't like that. Whenever I see uh, a number that is a friendly number that divides evenly and multiplies to give me a hundred I actually like doing kind of the shortcut because yeah. I can do that in my head mm -hmm. because look here 25 times what number when I want to get to a percent or a decimal I'm using what five but uh, but what what number is on the bottom of a fraction for percent a hundred a hundred exactly and 25 is an easy number to get to a hundred what times 25 equals a hundred twenty 25. Well, how many 25s are in 100? How many quarters are in a dollar? Four. Four. Whatever we do to the denominator, we must do to the numerator. So what's 4 times 11? Could you say that again? What is 4 hmm. times 11? 44. Excellent. There you go. So now read me this new fraction. Can you see this new 44, fraction? 4,400. 4,400. What does that look like? Because we're saying it, which it could be written as a decimal or a fraction, 4,400. What does my place value look like when I have decimals? The tenths, hundredths, 44 hundredths. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, that's only when it's a friendly number. Yes. Then otherwise you need to do your division. Would you mind doing the division problem? Do we have another sheet? Because we can leave this and then compare it. Yes. Them. No. We. Do. Yep, yep, right here. No, not right. Yep, right here. Here we go. There we are. So now you're going to do the division of 11 25ths with, with Miss Johnette, and then we'll see what that looks like. 
And let, oh, I should have timed. It would have been nice to see how long it takes, but go ahead. Yes. So 11 25th, that's a fraction. This also can be written as a division problem. 11 divided by 25. What can you tell me about this division problem? Um, five should go on the top because five can go on the 25. Five should go where? On the top. Anywhere? What place does a five go to? Can 25, can 11 be, can 11 and 25? I can't talk today because my shadow's in the way. <laughs> it's blocking your brain. <laughs> it should be the first number. The one? Yes. So one divided by 25. Dijon, let me ask you a question. If you have $11 and there's 25 people, is everybody going to get a dollar? No. No. So we can't have whole number answers. We're going to have to put a decimal point and break that down. Everybody's going to get less than a dollar. Let's add that decimal point. Now, you told me a five, and I asked you where the five goes. You see here we have the zero. tens place. Yes. We have the ones place. And the thousands. Is this the thousands place right here? Yes. Right to the very next place after the decimal. The ones. Here's the ones. To the left of the decimal is the ones. What's to the right of the decimal? Hundreds. Close. Tenths. This is the tenths. Remember here, here's our decimal. Tenths. Yes. And this is hundreds. Okay? So to the very right of the decimal is our tenth. So our five is going in the tenths place. Because it's not really a five. What is it? The tenths, fifty. Five tenths. All right, so let's go on. Here's my five in the tenths place. What do I do next? Um, subtract five from eleven. We don't subtract yet. We have our five up here. So... Five tenths times twenty-five is what? Five. Five times five equals twenty-five. Yeah, that's too big anyway. Well, and when you multiply it, you're going to get what? Five four quarters. You told me was a dollar, so five would be a dollar twenty-five. That's bigger than one one zero one two five. Because five times twenty-five, like you said, is one hundred twenty-five. Can I subtract one hundred twenty-five in this division problem here? No. No. So we had to go down one to four. So let's do four. What's four times 25? Four times 100. Very good. Exactly. Now so we're rolling. So now you said we subtract, correct? Yes. So 110, it's not really 110, but for the sake, 110 minus 100 is what? 10. Very good. So now I have 10. What can I do? If I add another zero, does that change the value of my 11? No. No, it sure doesn't. So I annex the zero, and I'm going to bring down that zero. So now I have 100 divided by 25. What is that? Um, How oh, many times you know can that. 25 go into 100? Could you please repeat that? I sure can. How many times can 25 go into 100? I see you. Four times. Very good. So now I put my four there in the hundredths place. Four times 25 is 100. Do I have a remainder? No. Nope. I'm done. So my answer is? 44. 44 what? Hundredths. Hundredths. Very and good. And this was by division. What was your answer when we did it using multiplication? What was our answer? 4,400. Exactly. Which way was easier? The first way or the second way? Second. Okay. If you like okay. the second way, then do the division. When I have friendly numbers, I go right to the multiplication piece. But either way works for you. We gave you two strategies. Great job. And, and your name? De Dejon, right? Yes. You are in the treasure chest. All right. We're going to get one more caller in, one more caller in. Next we have, is it Jamia? Hi, Jamia. Hi, Allenwood. Hi, and you're from Allenwood. Well, what, what's what's you know Allenwood? Allenwood? No, I just know that that's a brand new school. <laughs> All so right, we so have... you're our fourth caller, Al. 
All right, so Alan Wood is our next caller. Tell me what school, uh, what's your teacher's name, Jamia? Miss Cornegay. Okay, you got that? Yeah, sure did. Say it again. Miss <laughs> Cornegay. Miss Cornegay? Corna. Cornegay, is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, Cornegay. right. I what grade are you it. in, Jamia? Huh? What grade? What grade? Six. Sixth grade. Okay, right, so sixth grade. Sixth grade. Cool. Yes, we do. What's the problem Wonderful. that you need some help with? Okay, so I have to divide fractions by using the reciprocal yeah. and show a reciprocal. model. Oh, okay, reciprocal. Wonderful. And what was the word after that? By using the reciprocal and? Huh? What did you say after using the reciprocal? I said I had to use, have to divide fraction by using the reciprocal and showing a model. Oh, showing a model. Okay, so what are the numbers you're working with? Ms. Jennerette sounds like she wants to do this problem. She loves this kind of problem. So feel free. But go ahead. Come on. I'll Here's draw the, the model. What's your numbers? Two-thirds divided by two-fourths. Two-thirds divided by two-fourths. So you and I, we're going to start with numbers, and Ms. Jennerette is going to give us the picture. There we go. All right. She's going to work on the model. So tell me what you know about dividing fractions. I know that when you divide fractions, you can't. You have to use the reciprocal, which means to turn the fraction upside down, so you can multiply. Okay, Miss Jennerette's eyes just bugged out of her head. How come? What didn't you like? She said, "Turn it upside down." Use the word reciprocal because anyone who understands math knows reciprocal means that we're taking. Which number are we using the reciprocal of? Two fourths. Two fourths. So we're going to use the inverse of two fourths, which would be what? Say that again. What is the reciprocal of two-fourths? Four two. Four twos or four halves. Now, here's my four halves. Whatever I do on one side, I need to do on the other side. So I'm going to put my four halves on this side as well. When I multiply these numbers, it gives me eight over eight, which gives me one. So there's my one, right? So I'm allowed, whatever I did on this side, to do on this side and that's why we can use the reciprocal and multiply and get the right answer. Okay? So now we're looking 4 halves times 2 thirds. We can either just multiply it or we can simplify and then multiply. Which would you like to do? Multiply and then simplify. All right, so let's multiply. Numerator times numerator. What's 4 times 2? Huh? What is 4 times 2? 8. 8. And I'm going to just erase this division sign for a moment so we can fit our answer in here. Eight. And what's two times three? Six. Six. Eight six. Can we leave it like that? Say that again. Can we leave this fraction as eight six? I can't understand. You try yeah. it. All right. So we have eight six. What kind of fraction is eight six? An improper fraction. It is an improper fraction. You know what, though? It's not improper. It's a fraction greater than one because oh, they're not improper. All right, I they're like just it. as proper as anything else. So, so we have. Go, yes. So if we're greater than one, we can't leave it like this. So we need to simplify it. We need to change it into a um, mixed number, right? Yes. So let's do that quickly. Do you know how to do that? Yes. First of all, let's simplify it. Eight six. What number can we divide into both eight and six? Two. Two. So let's divide by two. 8 divided by 2 equals? 4. And 6 divided by 2 equals? 3. 3. So now we're taking this fraction that's greater than 1, which means we have at least one hole in there. Let's pull the one hole out. And what does that leave if we take out 3 thirds? What does that leave us? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I might be confusing you on that one. So let me erase this part. How do we change an improper fraction to a mixed number? Oh, you see how many times the denominator goes inside. Exactly. So how many times does three go into four? Once. Once. There's my one. And how many thirds are left over? One. One. And what's my denominator? Three. Always stays the same. So now you did your multiplication using the, you, you did your division using the reciprocal and got this answer. And Ms. Jeanrette is going to show us the model right before we end the show. So this will be the last piece of information you're leaving the show with. So we started off with two-thirds divided by two-fourths. So I'm going to draw two-thirds. Okay. So here's my two-thirds. So she has thirds, color in two of them. 
Okay. All right. And I want to divide the two-thirds into because we're rushing. Two-thirds. You know what? You know what might be a good idea? Uh, Jamia, you need to stay on the line, and anyone who's paying attention to this problem, what we're going to do is take a break as we transition from uh, the 4 or 5 o'clock show to the 5, 6 o'clock show, and we'll come back and start with this problem with the model. Yes. Okay? I'm going to leave the model here for you. So let's quickly see who, ah. from the first hour of elementary of the Count on Us show, let's see who, I'll pull one out real quick. Let's see who wins this. We have, uh, oh, oh. Dejan. 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 From Robert Excellent. Gray. Excellent. So congratulations, Dejan. And congratulations and thank you to all of our callers. Stay tuned because Count on Us is coming right back after a couple of breaks to another hour of helping you with your homework problems. Callers, stay on the line. Don't your hang homework up. questions will be answered. Especially Jamia. Jamia, stay there because you're going to have a model done for you. And we'll be right back with the next hour of Count on Us. Frank, and I'm here with today's mini lesson on elapsed time. Elapsed time is when we find the difference between the start time and end time of an event, such as a game, a movie, a race. So I'm going to work on one word problem with you and show you how I would solve it, and hopefully that will help you solve elapsed time problems in the future. So let's take a look at a problem. This problem is about my friend named Melanie. Melanie was going to the movies. She went to a movie that started at 10.30 a.m., so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down the start time. 10.30 a.m. The movie was three and a half hours, and we want to find out what time the movie finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our start time, and then we're going to count on the hours first. When we're finished counting on the hours, we're going to then switch to counting on the minutes, which is often what I like to do with elapsed time. Start by counting on hours until we can't add on any more hours, and then we switch to minutes. So let's take a look, and we're going to use a clock. And I preset the clock to 10.30 so that we were ready to go. So let's take a look. We're going to start at 10.30, and we're going to add on three more hours, and then we'll worry about the minutes later. So we're starting at 10.30. One more hour gets us to 11.30. One more hour gets us to 12.30. And then our third and final hour brings us to 1.30. So let's go ahead and write that out on our problem, and that way we can see exactly what we just did on the clock. So we were starting at 10.30 a.m., and one more hour brought us to 11.30 a.m. So that's our first hour. Then we went from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p, 12 p.m. And that was our second hour. Notice how I went from a.m. and p.m. because we were at 11.30 a.m. So the next hour would actually be 12.30 p.m. So be very careful to look at your a.m. and p.m. when you're working out a problem to see if somewhere in your problem you're switching between a.m. and p.m. Be very careful. We then went from 12.30 p.m. And we added on our third hour, and that brought us to 1.30 p.m. So there, we added on our three hours. We then need to go back and add on our half hour. Since an hour is 60 minutes, then a half hour is 30 minutes. So let's go back to our clock and add on 30 minutes. So we are here at 1.30 p.m. So let's count by fives and add on our 30 minutes. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. There's our 30 minutes brings us to 2 o'clock. So let's show that on our problem. And we were at 1.30 p.m. And then our half hour brought us, excuse me, to 2 o'clock p.m. And that was our 30 minutes. So let's take a look. We added on our 1, 2, 3 hours and 30 minutes, and that brought us to 2 o'clock p.m. So Melanie's movie ended at 2 o'clock p.m. So whenever you're working on elapsed time, remember to start by counting on your hours until you can't add on hours anymore, and then switch to adding on your minutes. And that will hopefully help you find elapsed time in the future. If you don't have a clock at home like I had here, you can always draw one on a piece of paper. Start by drawing a circle. Put your 12, your 6, your 3, and your 9. Put the other hours in between. And then at least you'll have a visual that will hopefully help you add on your hours and your minutes for elapsed time. Thank you so much, and stay tuned for some more Count on Us. Have a great afternoon. 
across America, service learning is helping students improve their grades and their communities. Service learning makes school exciting by connecting the classroom with community service projects. Before service learning, I was just an ordinary student causing mischief during class. After service learning started, I got so involved into it, I started paying attention more, picked up my grades. Okay, very good. Service learning absolutely drives academic success. Working together, students solve real problems, build new skills, and apply their knowledge in a whole new way. The great thing about service learning is it gives you this opportunity to go out into the world and do things hands-on. Inside the classroom and out, service learning opens new doors and brings learning to life. Service learning can make a difference in your school. Visit Learn and Serve America at learnandserve.gov to find out how. starts now. Welcome to Count On Us. What is the length from the entrance to the giant wheel? All right, so let's add three here and see what happens. First, measure first. I need you to double check yourself. So the second equation for some perimeter is two times length plus two times width. Welcome to the second hour of Count on Us. I'm Miss McCants. And I am Mr. Johnson. Welcome. Count on us. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we had uh, a lot of callers, um, but I'm going to give the number anyway. The number is 301-772-0080. Um, please give us a call if you have any questions about your math homework. Right. Um, you can also reach us on the web at PGCPS, and you're going to look for the... What what link is that? The webcam? Yeah. PGCPS.org. Uh -huh. TV96, Comcast, 38 on Verizon. So this gonna be, it's going to be it, hard today, It's going to be very it's interesting. Be okay, yeah, so who is our next caller? Hello? Welcome to Count on Us. Who do we have on the line? Jamia. Oh, we're continuing from before. Okay, okay, so we are still talking to so. Jamia. Jamia, are you there? Yes. Okay, so you're waiting on the model for the division problem that you called in with? Yes. Okay, so the first thing was we know that we had two-thirds. So you know how to make a model for two-thirds? You see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay, so that means both of these are shaded in, right? Uh-huh. Now we have to do something else now because... What we ended up with was 8, 6. So how will we break this model up now to show us 8, 6? We can split the model in half. Split the model in half. So we split the model in half. What do you see now? I see 4, 6. You see 4, 6, but we wanted what, how many 6s? 8. 8, 6. So what should I do again? Split it one more time. And which way should I split it? Vertical. Vertical? Here? No. 
I'm, I'm trying to get what you're saying. So help me out. So we're here. You already told me. We got the two thirds. We want to get to eight six. So that means we need six of them. So isn't eight larger than one hole? Wouldn't six over six be a hole? Yes. So that means we would need another one so we can get to six, right? Yes. All right. Now, how many would I shade in that one? One, two. So I shade into that one, and then I shade into that one. And now what do we have here? In all three models? Well, we already got rid of this model because you was telling me to split it in half. So I took it and split it in half for you. So now what do you see here? One and one-third. Oh, was that what we had when we multiplied four over two times two over three when we did numerator times numerator, which gave us eight over six, and then you divided six into eight and had one, which left us with two over six, and then we simplified to one and one-third. Yes. All right, all right. I hope that helped you out. You ready? Mm hmm All right, so we're moving on to the next caller now. Hello? Hi. Who do we have on the air today? Mac Anthony Ike. Okay, Mac Anthony Ike. Do you mind turning your TV all the way down or putting it on mute? I know you sound okay. good on TV, bro, but turn it down. Okay. So what school are you calling from? Uh, my problem is length times width times height. Length times width times height. D is this a word problem? Is it a picture with some numbers with it? Picture with some numbers. Okay, so uh, we're going to need you to turn your TV down or put it on mute. It is on mute. Okay, I, I'm still hearing some feedback. Mm, hold on. Okay. Mac got a lot of TVs in his house. Mac Anthony Ike. Mac Anthony Ike. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Okay. So now, what does the picture look like? Mm, a cube. It's a cube. So is Mr. Johnson doing a good job right now? Yes. Okay, great. So what um, else do you have with this cube? All right. The length, the width, and the height are all 24. All I need help with is how to get the volume. So you have 24 all around the cube like that? Yes. Okay. Okay, so length by width by height, the volume would be these three numbers multiplied together. Okay. So, so you, my teacher told me that I should break it down to um, like six and then multiply it. Break which number down by six? Mm, the 24s. Break them all down by six? Uh-huh. Ah, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, but if you're doing, if you're just trying to find the volume, mm -hmm. and then we're, she's teaching you the standard algorithm, then the volume is length times width times height. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we would just be substituting these numbers for these letters. 24 times 24 times 24. And then that would give us the volume. So I'm not sure what you mean when she says breaks it break it apart into six. Maybe she was trying to get you numbers that were easier for you to uh, multiply, multiply by. by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe oh. that was a part of the notes that she gave you, but she really wanted you to use these same numbers. All right. Okay. Oh, and I'm also calling because I did the just 24. You did the just 24 Okay, so you did earlier. do the 24 from earlier? Uh-huh. Okay. okay, so I'm going to put it up here. Which one did you do? Number A. Letter or uh, card A? Yeah. Okay. So he used the numbers 2, 4, 4, and 8. Okay. Um, so tell me what I should write, Matt. You got 2. You ready? 4. Mm -hmm. eight, okay, let's four. go. All right. 4 times 4. 4 times 4. Equals 16. Okay. Plus eight. Sixteen plus eight equals. Mm. Mm. Uh, no, no, wait. Uh oh. All right. What we got, Mac? Um. All right, we're gonna have to give you a couple more seconds, and then we're gonna have to move on, Mac. 
Uh, two times four. Two, two times, times four, four is eight. Eight. Mm. So you got those two numbers out the way. Um, eight plus eight. Is sixteen. Sixteen. And sixteen. And Plus the last one. What four. you gonna do with the four? You gotta do something with the four. Um <coughs> oh, it's okay. Hey, but look, Mac, your name got written on one of the little cards. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting it in here because since you had a call about your question with your Volume one, we got you in the box. Is that okay? Thank you. You're welcome. What school were you? We want to give a, a prize to your teacher. Mm, my teacher's name is Miss Sickleman. Sickleman. Okay, that's a good one. Sickleman. Okay, so we're putting her name in the treasure chest and as well. What school? Um, Woodmore Elementary. Woodmore. All right, got gotcha. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, welcome to Count On Us. Who do we have on the line? Hello? Joshua. 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 All right, Joshua, where are you calling from? Oxen Hill. Oxen? Oh, mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Oxen I love Hill Oxen Elementary? Hill. Oxen Hill Oxen. Elementary. Yeah. Oxen Hill Elementary? Yes. Okay. So um, who's your teacher there? <coughs> Miss James and Miss Diamaku. Miss James and Miss who? Miss Diamaku. Diamaku. Okay, so what's your question, Joshua? I want to know what's 9 over 5 plus 27 over 15. 9 fifths plus 27 fifteenths? Yes. <clears throat> now, what grade are you? Sixth grade. Six? Did you say six? You said six or fifth? <clears throat> Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade, okay. Okay, so, um, well, can we add our fractions like this? Yes. We can? Yes. Okay, well, tell us how. What should we do first? What's the first step? I think two plus... Two plus one is... Three. We're gonna do what? Two plus one is three. I got you. Two, two plus, plus one, one is three. three. But Joshua, let me ask you a question. What kind of fractions are these? What kind of fraction is nine over five? What do we call that kind of fraction? A numerator. The the, the five is the numerator. I mean, no. The five is the denominator. The nine is the numerator. Excellent, Excellent job. <laughs> so what do we call that kind of fraction when your numerator is larger than your denominator? Greatest common fact. Okay, so these are called improper. improper. Okay? Improper because the numerator is larger than the denominator. And when... So now when you have your... Also, your fraction greater than one, now you look at it and say... Are these denominators like or unlike? Are they the same number there or are they different numbers there? Different. Different. Okay, so Ms. McCance, what should he do when they have different numbers? <clears> the <throat> first thing you need to do is change the um, improper fractions to a mixed number. You know how to change an improper fraction to a mixed number? No. 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 So what you need to do is you're going to take the denominator and you're going to divide it into the numerator. How many times, or find out how many times the denominator is going to go into the numerator. So if I have five, if I have five, how many times can I pull five out of nine? Five, nine plus five? No. How many, hold up your finger, nine fingers, how many fives do you have? You should only have one. One. That, that's there right, we go. one. So one. you're going to have one whole, and what's left over? <clears throat> Zero. No. Put your nine fingers up. Take five down. How many is left over? Should be four fingers. Four. There that's you right. Go. All okay. right. 
Now it's a little tricky with this 27 so, over 15. Yes, it's going to be a little tricky, but we're going to work <laughs> through this together. So if I have 27 I can, um, uh, and I want to take 15 out of it, I can only take 15 out one time, and that's going to leave me with 12 over the 15. Okay? Okay. All right, so now I have 1 and 4 fifths plus 1 and 12 fifteenths. I'm going to try to find a common denominator because I cannot add um, two fractions with different denominators, unlike denominators, okay? Okay. So looking at the 5 and the 15, what would be a common denominator between the two of them? And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to be 5. I think it's 2 or 1. <laughs> What do 5 and 15 have in common, Joshua? If you count it by 5s and you count it by 5, 15. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, okay, stop right there. There we go. Let's stop at 20 because you went too far. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, wait a minute. Do mm -hmm. you hear a 15 when you count by 5s? 4. Joshua, do you hear a 15 yes. when you count by 5? Do you hear a 15? Yes. You said ah. 5, 10, 15. So 15 is going to be our common denominator for our new fraction, okay? Okay. All right, so we're going to leave the bottom fraction the same, and we're going to leave that as 12 fifteenths. Okay. And now we're going to change our 4 fifths fraction. We're going to multiply that by 3. 5 times 3 gave me 15. So whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So 4 times 3 is, do you know your 3 timetables? 3, 6, 9, and 8. Not 8, but 12. Dang it. Mm -hmm. Dang. I, I know, that. I know. You were trying it. 12, all right. Okay, so now we have 1 and 12 fifteenths plus 1 and 12 fifteenths. Look at that. I, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. I know that's what. <laughs> so, what do we do next, Joshua? What numbers can we add together first? Or what number should we add? Um, I twelve. That's right. We're going to add the twelves. And what's twelve plus twelve? Plus twelve. Mm-hmm. What's two plus two? Four. That's right. And what's one plus one? Two. Excellent job. And we're going to leave our denominators the same. So it's 24 fifteenths. Okay? Okay. 24 fifteenths. And now we're going to add our ones. What's one plus one again? Two. All right. So now we have two and 24 fifteenths. Now what we're going to do is take the two and 24 fifteenths and change that. We're going to, because we can't leave this as a improper fraction. Remember we talked about that. So now we're going to make the, take the 15 and find out how many times we can pull 15 out of 24. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it's going to be one time. Okay. Okay. One with nine fifteenths left over. Okay? Okay. So what's two plus one? Are you looking at the TV? Yes. What's two plus one? Three. Three. <laughs> I got Comcast. Oh, uh, yeah. We yeah. love Comcast. Yeah. Three and nine fifteenths, but we're going to reduce the nine fifteenths. And we're going to reduce that by dividing the numerator and the denominator by three. Okay. Okay. So nine divided by three is three. Yes. And 15 divided by three is five. And there you go. So that is your final answer, okay? All right, okay. Joshua. We're yep. going to put your name inside the bucket and let's wish you well for the end of the program for us to pull your name out now. Your teacher is? Miss James and Miss Dean Oxen. I got you. Okay. All right, Oxen Hill. Okay, thank you so much for giving us a call. Okay, so who do we have next on the air? Hello? Hello? Hi. Who are we speaking with? We're speaking with Ola Wasson. Ola Wasson? Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I remember you from last year. Thank you for calling us this year. How are you doing? How was your summer? 
It was good. Okay, great. So what's your question this year? Uh, what did you say? I said, what's your question? Uh, my question mm -hmm. is about coordinate planes. Okay, what's your question? Um, so my question mm -hmm. is, I'm going to find, um, I'm going to see if the coordinates given can make a shape. Ooh, sound like a lot of points. Though. Yes, it does sound like a lot, lot of points. points. Okay. Um, we're going to do the best we can, okay? Okay. So let's get start with the first point. Um, the first coordinate is negative three fifths Ooh. and five. Negative three fifths and five. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant negative three and five. Oh. Oh, negative three and five. Okay. All right. So. Um, do you know which uh, line would be the negative and which would be the positive, or which uh, numbers in the ordered pair will represent your x and y axis? Um, I know there are four quadrants. 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 Excellent okay. job. And okay, so what about quadrant one? Are th is this quadrant positive, positive, or negative, positive? That. Quadrant one is positive, positive. Excellent job. So what about quadrant two? Quadrant two is positive, negative. I'm, I mean negative, positive. Thank you. It's negative, positive. Okay. And so what about quadrant three? <clears throat> um, quadrant three is negative, negative. Okay. And last one, quadrant four. Quadrant four is positive, negative. Okay, so we know that negative three, five is going to be in quadrant two, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go over threes. It's going to be a little hard. Some help. Um, so to do, to solve negative three and five, it First, you have to start from the origin. Okay, good. I like your vocabulary. We're going to start with from the origin. And that's in the center where the four quadrants meet. Okay. Excellent. Um, so from there, you move three spaces to the left. One, two, three. And then you go up five spaces. One, two, three, four, and this will be the fifth one. Okay, right. so what's your next ordered pair? The next ordered pair is five, negative three. Five, negative three. Okay. Start and at the origin. Which way I go? You go right or left? You're gonna go down. First number. I mean, you're gonna go to the right. Mm-hmm. One, two, five. three, four, five. Okay. And you're going to go down three. One, two, three. All right. Um, the next word pair is negative six. Eight. Okay. Started the origin. One, two, three, four, five. Another line will be six. Go up eight. And we don't have enough room. <laughs> we don't have a lot of room. Okay, so how many more ordered pairs do you have, Ola Watson? Uh, I think that's it. Was that's that the it? Last one? Oh, okay. So, let me make a couple of more lines then. Okay. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
All right, so here we go. So you got a point here, point here, and a point here. Now you're supposed to connect the, all your points. To see if they can make a shape. Can they make a shape? Okay. Mm, so here's our first point. Okay. Here and so what's I the go other? From here to here, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and then from here to here. Mm. They should have gave you one more so they can close it off. But it's looking at that little. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Does that make a it shape? It is in the shape. That doesn't look like a shape to me. But we did order. We did put the points on the way you gave us the ordered pairs. And then we connected them. Mm-hmm. So the three ordered pairs can not make a figure. That's right. They are not making a figure based on the information that you gave us. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, I have your name. I'm folding it up, and I'm going to put it in the box. And I think it's about time for us to take a break. All right. So, um, callers, please stay on the line. We will get back to you as soon as we come back from break. And we'll see you in about three minutes. Three minutes. I'm from Tilton Elementary School. I'm here today for the email question of the day. Mary needed to place a fence in her yard in order to keep her sheep in. If her yard is a rectangle with a length of 26 feet and a width of 20 feet, how much fencing will she need? Well, let's take a look. So first, I would draw a rectangle to represent how, I mean, her feet. Then I would draw 26 feet at one side and 26 feet on the opposite side. Then I would draw 20 feet at one and another side and then 20 at the opposite side to represent the fencing. Since we're talking about perimeter, since, since I have to do perimeter, I have to add all the numbers. 26 plus 26 plus 20 plus 20. 6 plus 6 equals 12, so I'll put the 2 at the bottom and carry the 1. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 8. Then i add the 1. That equals 92 feet. So the fencing of her yard will be 92 feet. That's it for the email question of the day. Stay tuned for some more on Count On Us. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding programs in your area to finding advice from PGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. It's easy, Grandpa. Brush your teeth twice a day. Floss your teeth once a day. That's a way to fight decay. Hey, hey. Brush and floss every day. Hey, hey. Healthy smiles are the way. Hey, hey. hey. You can keep your smile for a lifetime. Even a boomer Saurus like me. Boomers, you gotta love them. Welcome back to the second half of uh, the second hour of Count on Us. I am Miss McCann. And I am Mr. Johnson. And our number is 301-772-0080. But I didn't have to tell you that because so many students have been calling in today in the first hour and the second hour. 
So right. we are off to a great start. Great start. Who's our next caller? Caller? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Welcome to Count On Us. Who do we have? Johanna Cabrera. Johanna. Hi, Johanna. How All are right. you? What school are you calling from? Uh, Ridgecrest Elementary. Ridgecrest Elementary. And who was your teacher there? Miss Raleigh and Miss Tackett. T or would it be? Tackett? Yes. Okay. okay. So what's your question today? Uh, my question is uh, um, how, how um, about distributive property and multiplication? Okay, so you're doing distributive property with using multiplication? Yeah. Okay, so can you give us the problem? Mr. Johnson is going to write it down. Mm hmm Times five. Fourteen times five. Equals. Equals. In parentheses. Parentheses. Ten times five. Ten times five. In parentheses. Parentheses. Plus. Plus. In parentheses, four times five in parentheses. Four times five in parentheses. Okay. What grade are you in, um, Joanna? In fourth grade. You're in the fourth grade. Okay. So I like these kind of problems. So let's start with, um, we're going to put this to the side for a second and just go straight over here to the other side of the equal sign. Okay. Okay, so um, what's 10 times 5? 50. 50. Mm-hmm, great job. What's four times five? Um, 20. 20. So now what we're going to do is just add the 50 plus the 20 together. Um, 70. 70. Okay, so now that we've done the distributive property, and basically what they wanted us to do was to break up the 14. We broke the 14 up into its place value, so um, the 4 is in the 1's place, and that's the reason why we have 4 here. And the 10 is in the 10's place, so that's why we have the 14 and the 10 going here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now it's easier for us to break it up into the separate portions for distributive property, because we're really just distributing this 5 to the 10 and this, the 5 to the 4. And we're going to add that together. And that's the, the, another way of multiplying. So 14 times 5 is really going to be 70. Do you want us to show you the other way? The yeah. vertical way? Yeah. Okay. And you said it was 4 times 5? Did you say, what's 4 times 5? Um, 20. Yep. So now we're just going to regroup that 20 and bring it over the 1. And what's 5 times 1? 5 times 1? Five. It's 5 plus 2 more. 7. And now we see that 70 equals, equals 70. 70. Is that all that you had to do for the distributive property of multiplication? Because yeah. basically you, you told it to us mm -hmm. when you gave us the problem because you broke your 14 down into the 10s and the 1s place and then you multiplied. Okay? Yeah. All right, so I already took your name down. I put it in our box. We are ready to roll through. So, next caller. Hello. Welcome to Count on Us. Hello. Hi. Who are we speaking with? Alexi. Alexi? Uh -huh. Hi, um, what school are you calling from? Huh? What school are you calling from? Montpelier. Mount Montpelier. Okay, right. so um, what's your question for us today? I don't understand. Um, 636 minus 300, 324. Okay, is that it? 636 minus 324? Yes. All right, Alexi, what grade are you in? Third. 
you're in third grade okay so when you have this number here and you're taken away what's the first thing you should do So I'm looking at this number, 636 minus 324, and I'm trying to figure out where you should start. Should I start at this 6 and take away, or should I start at this 3, or should I start at this 6? Which one should I start with? You take, you take away, you're starting on the 6. Okay, this the one or this one? last 6 or the first 6? The first, the, the, the... The first, the, the last six. The last six, okay. Mm -hmm. So six minus four is? Six minus four. Six minus four is eight. Uh, two. Two, mm -hmm. excellent job, Alexi. Now we go to the next number. Three take away two. Okay, so you have three and you're taking away two. So how many do you have left over? One. Okay. Excellent job. And now we'll get to six minus three again. Six minus three. Mm-hmm. Three. Three. All right. So now you can always check your work just to make sure by doing an inverse operation, which means instead of doing subtraction, I'm going to do addition. So 4 plus 2 is how much? 4 plus 2 equals 6. And 2 plus 1 equals? Excellent job. And if your numbers match up, that means you got the right answer. All right. Okay, so your final answer for subtracting 636 minus 324 is going to be 312. Was Thank that the on, only thing you needed help with tonight? No. <laughs> no. And you, you have another question? Yes. Okay, what is it? I need, and then I need help with 270 and minus. Plus okay, 270 minus 131. So with this one, it's a little bit different because we have a zero. So we're going to have to borrow from our tens place. Does that make sense? We're going to have to take some, one of our tens and make it into ones. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so now I have ten ones. I'm going to take one away from there. And Mr. Johnson put a model up here. I have ten ones, and we're going to take one away, if I can. Okay. So how many do we have left? You want to count? Yes. Okay, ready? One. Mm-hmm. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's right. So we have nine, because we had ten ones, but we took one away. Okay, so now we have six in our tens place because we took one of the ones, and now we're going to say six minus three is how much? Uh, Hold up six fingers and take three away. Three. 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 And then we have two minus one, which is how much? It's one. Okay, so now our answer is going to be 139. All right, Alexi. Good job. Third Thank grade. Thank you for right. calling us. And Mr. Johnson has already put your name in the treasure chest, so um, stay, stick around until the end of the show to see if you're one of the winners, okay? All right. All right. All right, so, so who do we have next? Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Amber. <laughs> Amber, what school are you calling from? Beltsville. Beltsville. Now All she's right. changing her voice yeah, on Beltsville. us. Beltsville. <laughs> right. So who's your teacher at Beltsville? 
Miss Carmichael. Carmichael, all right. Um, Amber, can I ask you to do me a favor and turn your TV all the way down or put it on mute because I can hear Mr. Johnson speaking to you and myself? Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, Thank great. You. So what is your question? Um, well, um, I have a question about um, the division mm -hmm. that we have to do because she said that even it can be like a whole number, but it can also be a fraction, and then you have to simplify it. Okay, so could you give us the read the question to us so we can um, see what you're talking about? It's two. Uh, no, it's four thousand eight hundred and fifty-two divided by thirty-two. That's it right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me move this down because we're gonna need a little space. Mm -hmm. So try it again. Four thousand. 852 divided by what number? 32. 32. Alright, so w what should be the first thing I do? Um, I'm guessing see if 32 can, no, to see if, I don't know. Let's see, see if 32 can go into 4. Can 32 go into 4? No. Okay. We, it cannot go into 4. So now we're going to go over one more. 32. Can 32 go into 48? Yes. How many times? Once. All right. So, Amber, I want to make sure it's clear because when Ms. McCance is saying that 32 can't go into 4, mm -hmm. she's saying that you don't have enough thousands to give to 32 different people. You understand that? Yeah. So it's not just 4 because it's really 4,000. So it's definitely enough you can give out. But right now, you don't have enough thousands to give to all 32. So we turn those thousands now into hundreds. So now we're left with 48 hundreds. So if you have $4,800 bills, you now have enough to give out to those 32 people. And you say each one of them will get one, right? Yeah. Okay, so what's one times 32? 32. Excellent job. And then I do the subtraction. Eight take away two is... Six. And four take away three is? One. All right. Then we bring down. Okay. And why are we bringing that down? What did we just do? Remember what I talked about with the thousands mm -hmm. and we turned it into hundreds? Mm -hmm. Why did we bring that five down? What do you think we're doing now? Because 16 won't be enough. Because 32 won't, can't go into 16, so you bring the five down, so... Right. Could go in. There were sixteen hundreds left over, mm -hmm. so you had sixteen hundred dollar bills, and that's not enough. So now we got to turn it into what's the next place value after hundreds? Thousand. Uh-uh, going down. Remember, we're going down. So ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. So now we have a hundred and sixty-five ten dollar bills that we want to give out to thirty-two people. Right. Okay. So how many times can thirty-two go into a hundred and sixty-five? Let's see if we do this. How many times can 3 go into 16? What number times 3 is close to 16? 5. 5. So let's start with 5. That's a good place to start off. And 5 times 32 is 160. Is that close enough for us? Yes. All right. So let's put the 5 there. We know that's 160. What's five take away zero? Zero. Five take five. away? Five. Excellent job. Now we're bringing down the next number, and while we're bringing that, we're, we're turning those now, our leftover tens into, we're turning them into what? One. Ones. Excellent job, Amber. Okay, so how many $1 bills can you get to 32 people? Cover the twos. What times three will get you close to five? Three. Mm. Three times three is nine, right? So what times three get you close to five? Without going over five. Um. What's one times three? Three. What's two times three? Six. So six is too much. So how many times can we give 32 people if we have 52 $1 bills? And you said that was the one. one. There we go. So 
Now, what's 52 minus 32? Um, 20. Excellent job, 20. So this is what your, uh, your teacher was talking about. Some of your answers could be done in fractions because normally mm -hmm. you would say this was leftovers or a remainder. But when you yeah. want to write it, there's several different ways you can write it. So how do you think we might can use this number, this number, and this number to write it as a fraction? Where well, you... so 151 would be the whole number. Excellent. Excellent job. Mm -hmm. The remainder would be the numerator. Mm -hmm. And the number that you're dividing by would be the denominator. And what's that? You know that word for the number that we're dividing by? What is that called? Um, the dividend. Dividend is in there. So the dividend is in. The divisor is divisor. out. Divisor. There we yes. go. So now we got 151 with 20 over top of 32. Can we simplify that? Can we simplify the 20, 30? Yes. And what number goes into 20 and into 32? Two. Any bigger number? Four. Four, okay. How many times can four go into 20? Um, four can go into 25 times. Okay, how many times can four go into eight? I mean, 32. I'm sorry. Look, I'm... Mm -hmm. Four goes into 32. How many times? Four goes into 32. Um... Good thing my mic was down. Eight. Eight. There we go. Did that help you out, Amber? Yeah. Okay, great. That is your final answer, okay? Thank you. You are welcome. You're welcome. And keep doing a good job, okay? Okay. All right, we'll talk to you next time. All right, I think we got enough time for one more call. What do you think? I think we can squeeze one in. Squeeze one in. Hello? Huh? Huh? Hello, is this Craig? Yes. Hey, hey Craig. Craig. How you doing? Good. What school are you calling from? Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier? Mount Rainier, all right. Okay, so what's your problem? 135. 135 times, times? 16. 16. 135 times 16. Do you want it, uh, is it written vertically? Or Before, before we start, uh, you know the 24 challenge? Uh -oh. oh, yes. Okay, you want to do the 24 challenge first. <laughs> yeah. I have three out of four of them. Oh, okay. You have three out of the four cards? Yes. Okay, oh, well, well you know, you know what you hot over. stuff. Let me go ahead and put this up here. Which one would you like to try? A. a. You would like to try card A. Okay. Two, four, four, eight. So let's try this one. All right, sir. Two. You ready? Four, four, this eight. This is what I like. Start with a challenge. Okay. Okay, okay let's go. Two times 8 equals 16. Mm -hmm. That sounds good so far. Plus 4. Plus 4. Equals 20. Mm -hmm. That looks plus good so four, far. Plus another 4 equals 20. Oh, let's ring this bell. Right. We got All a winner. Right. We have That's a winner. Let me talking. take your name. And let me get your name twice because we're going to put you in there you twice, are Craig. Awesome. And that's how I like to start. All right, so e Craig. and D also. You have C and D also. Yes. Uh, we, well, we you know you don't have down. to. I was gonna we, say we you know you don't down. have to. Get, so you want to get back us. to your homework? Yes, we got it. We got to get your homework in there. We first. already got your name, mm -hmm. and if we get a little time, we'll get you a third name up in there. Okay. So let's go. Th Hello. Craig, I'm done. I'm. I'm Craig, done. you gone? Okay. All right. Who's Who's next? Isis. 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 What school are you calling from, Isis? Huh? huh? I said, what school are you calling from? I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? No. Then how, you, then you how could you to answer? Me. Uh, come on, Isis. What school are you calling from? I'm calling from Mary Harris Mother Jones. Mary, Mary Harris, Harris Mother, Mother Jones. Jones. That's right. right. Okay, what, school, what grade are you in? Huh? What grade are you in? Fifth grade. You're in fifth grade, my mic not working? Okay, so... Let me slide it up a little how can bit. I, how can we help you, Isis? Uh, I have a question, and it's two and seven hundreds. I like rounded. the way you said that. Two and seven hundreds rounded. 
run it to the to the hundredth place. Okay. okay. So did I write it right the first way? Let's go. Let's see if we if I did exactly what you wanted me to do. So Is this written two correctly? And zero. What'd you say? Two, two and, and seven, seven hundredths. hundredths. Round it to the nearest hundredths. So let's see. So is this written correctly? Yes. Which one? Which one? Should, which one should? Which one is written correctly? Which one should I select? The middle one. The middle one. All okay, right. Okay, great. So sure. there was nothing else. <laughs> there was nothing else with this. Because you said you're, we're rounding it to the nearest hundredths. Hundredths. Hmm. Or we're rounding it to the nearest tenth. Hundred. We're rounding it to the nearest hundredths. Okay. So here's the hundredths right here. So normally when we round, what do we do, Isis? Uh, when you round a number, you normally look to? To the right. I normally yeah. look to the right. I look to the right. But there's nothing to the right. So if I look to the right and there's nothing there, what happens to this number, Isis? Huh? If I look to the right of seven, there's not a number here that... Helps us round. So if, yeah. we, don't, if we don't have a number to the right of the number that we're trying to round to, we don't have, we can't change this. So if, if it was a five or a six or a seven or an eight or a nine, we could round this number up. up. That's right. If it was a zero, one, two, three, or four, this number would stay the same. So we don't have a number there. Isis, what you want us to do is 2.07. Is it closer to any other number? Huh? Isis. Yes. Can you do me a favor? Is your TV up loud? Can you turn your TV down a little bit? Or can you go to another room? Do you have another problem for homework besides two and seven hundreds that you got around to the hundreds place value? Do you have another problem? Because this kind, this one is already done for you. Huh? This problem is already done for you. Isis is already rounded to the nearest hundreds because. It's 2.700s, and 700s is close to 700s. Yep. It's rounded to 700. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one is 2 rounded to, rounded to um, 2.732. Okay. okay. 2 and 732 thousandths. 2 and 732 thousandths. We're rounding to the nearest tenth. Round into the nearest, nearest ten. ten. Okay, so okay. which digit is in the tenths? Isis. Yes. What digit is in the tenths place? Seven. Seven. So that's the number we want to round to. Mm-hmm. So what are your rules for rounding? We're rounding up. Okay, so your rules are zero through four. The number stays the same. And five to nine, nine, go up one. So I look to the right. What number do you see there, Isis? Up. What number do you see next to the seven? Three. A three. So I go right to this rule. So what happens to the seven? What does it say? Uh, stay the same. We that's right. right. So this would be 2.7. Normally these turn to zeros, but since we just want to know the temps, we drop those off, and that's our answer, 2.7. I hope or that helps you out, Isis. Tenths. So I'm going to drop your name in here. We're going to shake it up real quick. I'm going to have Miss McCants pull out a lucky winner for the day. Okay. And Ms. McCants, I'm don't look, don't look, eyes. don't look, I'm don't look. My eyes All right, and, I and our winner is... Craig. Uh, Craig, Craig, all Craig. right, Craig. Why I hope you're still Craig, watching, Craig. Why we got your name. At you. There we go, Craig. All right. <coughs> well, all right. Well, thank you for tuning in to Count on Us every Monday and Wednesday. I hope you come back, call in, and have more questions for us. Have a wonderful day. See you next week. Next week. I'm done. Yay!